Staff having their doctors tell them that they need to take stress leave. High levels of attrition, even amongst company veterans. General chaos. Jason Schreier's report on the development of Anthem chronicled years of company failure and a painful final sprint to the finish, with staff being put through a heavy period of crunch. BioWare are not happy with this report, and in responding to it, they have fed into the report's most damning conclusions, releasing a public statement that is fundamentally hypocritical. Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report. So, my video going through the development history of Anthem released late last night, so you might have missed it. It certainly is, I would say, essential you know, required viewing for today's video, so I do recommend that you check it out. We're also going to have a report on Dragon Age 4 in the very near future, so keep an eye on the channel for that. Okay, Jason Schreier's report involved talking to 19 current and former Bioware employees. It tells the story of a company with deep problems, one that has seemingly not advanced its internal structure and process as it scaled up, such that it had multiple teams be severely damaged by a few of its projects, leading to decreased employee health, doctor-mandated stress breaks, and significant departures. Anthem's first two years seemed to start off solidly, but after Casey Hudson left, there was no clear vision for the game, resulting in staff working for a management team that did not really have answers to important questions. This led to a work environment that was rife with uncertainty as the scope and the vision of the project seemingly shifted and morphed over time, with employees not knowing where they stood. This is by no means a good working situation, especially for creatively driven people who typically do want to feel like they're working towards a goal, working towards a vision. As time went on, things got worse and worse for the Anthem team, but at the same time, the Mass Effect Andromeda team were closer to launch in a very painful spot, and that's something that the Anthem team would soon know all too well, because they entered production in June 2017, but production only really kicked off after that, with them only having a single mission implemented by the start of 2018, and still many of the core systems not being worked out. While much of the uncertainty of the initial years was there, it was now on top of extreme crunch. The story of Anthem is one of poor management, management that lacked a cohesive vision for the game, combined with a company culture that essentially said, we're Bioware, we're special, we have Bioware magic, it will all come together if we just slog through the process. Management also reportedly was quite routine in brushing off employee concerns with the game, including ones that would be mirrored by players and critics upon release. Combined with an increasing level of animosity between the Bioware, Edmonton, and Austin Studios, we really do just have what seems like a horrible, horrible work environment for just about everyone involved. This led to many key staff leaving, and while sure there was a lot of headline-grabbing names that left the company, what was not widely reported is the quantity of staff who left alongside them, including many of the company veterans. This essentially all happened during the Mass Effect Andromeda development process, and that led to the death of the Bioware Montreal studio, but that was a younger studio. This though with Anthem, this happened to the Edmonton studio, their original most experienced one. And yes, this means that the development of this game came at the expense of their most valuable and um, longest term staff. So none of this is good for Bioware. Schreier's report is damning. Well, Bioware have responded, and you know what? They responded very poorly indeed. First, Bioware posted their response to the 11,000 word report 16 minutes after it went up. For Bioware to have read through the entire report, and then to have written a response, and then to have had that pass through legal, that just is not feasible. So, no, this report seems to have been written based on bullet points provided by Jason Schreier when he was asking them for comment. So already we're off to a very rough start, making Bioware and EA seem very defensive. Unfortunately though, the contents of their reply are not good. They start by saying they wholeheartedly stand by every current and former member of the team, including leadership. The report is hardly glowing, but take note of this because this will come up later. Bioware then go on to say, We chose not to comment or participate in this story because we felt there was an unfair focus on specific team members and leaders who did their absolute best to bring this totally new idea to fans. We did not want to be part of something that was attempting to bring them down as individuals. We respect them all and we built this game as a team. Well, first, that's not really a fair appraisal of Jason's article. Yes, leadership crops up, 
but that doesn't seem to be an unfair thing to mention given what sources told him. But importantly, the article does not have much to say about the subjects as individuals, and I think that's a key distinction here. Bioware then went on to say, we put a great emphasis on our workplace culture in our studios. The health and well-being of our team members is something that we take very seriously. We have built a new leadership team over the last couple of years, starting with Casey Hudson as our general manager in 2017, which has helped us make big steps to improve studio culture and our creative focus. Well, you see, here's the thing. By saying that, they literally are implying that their old leadership uh, situation was not working out well. Now, that is the understanding that one would come to after reading Jason's report on the Andromeda and um, Anthem situations. So, while Bioware are trying to refute those things here, this statement actually reinforces his reports, and it really seems very hypocritical given the first thing that they said, as it does imply that part of the problem was the old leadership. And that really is strange. They then go on to say, we hear the criticisms that were raised by the people in the piece today, and we're looking at that alongside feedback that we receive in our internal team surveys. We put a lot of focus on better planning to avoid crunch time, and it was not a major topic of feedback in our internal postmortems. Right, well, here's the thing. They might say that, but that actually just does not appear to be the case. It doesn't appear to be in line with reality based on what we have heard from both the Anthem and Andromeda reports. If crunch was not a problem, then they wouldn't be planning to better manage it. So this statement just seems a bit bizarre. Bioware then end by saying this, we don't see the value in tearing down one another or another's work. We don't believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft better. And that's a rather disastrous take. You see, accountability is one of the roles of the press. It is there to bring stories to light that people should know. And yes, the press is not perfect, especially these days. But what Jason has done here, you know, it is an article of true journalism in the, in the, like, the classical sense and what it should be. In a world where major organizations will write stories based off a single anonymous source, he went out and got 19 sources. This isn't Jason being a vulture, this is him seeing a game that clearly does not look like it took seven years to make from a studio that has struggled with past titles. Yeah, something doesn't seem right there, that means it's worth looking into, and that's exactly what he did. That's what the free press is supposed to do. In doing that, bad workplace practices are uncovered. Workplace practices that greatly have damaged Bioware themselves, but more importantly, have had a major negative impact on the health of many of their employees. Indeed, this is something that has led to Bioware underperforming financially and also having severe brain drain, resulting in them losing many of their strongest developers. That is something that will be damaging to their long-term performance. So by underplaying these problems, they are playing right into the Bioware magic mentality that the original report was so critical of. Here's the thing, when press is working well, it punishes bad practices and rewards good ones. This report is an example of that. By attempting to paint that report in the light that they did and by essentially brushing problems under the rug, Bioware managed to play right into the expectations set out by the report. As it turns out, saying, we investigated ourselves and found that everything is fine is just not a good strategy. The response is incredibly weak. Even without Jason's report, I think we all knew that things were not going well at Bioware. By deflecting criticism into an attack on the journalists' motives, they really, they do themselves and their current staff a disservice. Let's talk about Jason's response, because of course Jason responded, and he really did not pull punches. It was, it was actually surprising. He pointed out how their post was indicative of the bad behavior that his report was highlighting, going on to say, or well, to point out how misaligned with reality their post was, and how their statement is not in line with a company who lost dozens of employees to burnout, stress, and depression. After stewing on it, well, Jason really came out strong, calling their response cowardly and pointing out how deluded that it um, seems. He then finishes by talking about essentially how it's a righteous type of reporting that he's doing, and he told people that, you know, they can contact him anytime. So, I mean, yeah, that was targeted at developers, and yes, it's a bit of self-promo, but, I mean, you can't really blame a journalist for trying to hunt down sources in his, in his position. This is a pretty pragmatic way to do that. Personally, my main thought is just how strategically inept Bioware were. Are the people involved here not well-read? How can you get into a position of leadership without being strategically aware? 
Knowing that this report was coming, they could have released their own public statement well ahead of time talking about the crunch process, acknowledging the blindingly obvious, and paying lip service to making amends. That would have sort of taken Jason's thunder. As for their statement, well, they could have stayed within the realms of reality. Knowing that they looked weak, they could have acknowledged that they looked weak, they could have actually talked about that, and they could have used it as the basis to really springboard themselves into a comeback story. That's an example of turning a weakness into a strength. So yeah, I, I mean, I get pretty ticked off when I see bad strategy. Of course, that's just one perspective, and them manipulating themselves into a position of getting away with it is obviously not a good thing for anyone other than them, and perhaps not even for them in the long run. It's just that, I mean, strategically, this was such a bad bit of communications, I'm surprised it made it out there. Now, since this broke, we've seen a trickle of other statements. Jason said that he heard back from many other employees, including people who were not a part of the report, and that they were saddened and disappointed by um, the um, the response that Bioware had. We then saw a series of tweets from Manvir Hare, who of course worked on Mass Effect Andromeda. Now he posted about his dislike of the Frostbite engine, how he's much happier working with Unreal 4. Of course, as we heard in the report, Frostbite is a specific engine with specific tools made for DICE's first-person shooters and not for its current use in Bioware. Of course, Bioware got none of the benefits of using an in-house custom engine, but all of the downsides, struggling with poorly documented code and limited support from the core Frostbite support team who were tied up in the FIFA franchise. He went on to talk about how he was a stretch casualty crashing out of Bioware in a rough mental spot, um, ending by talking about how Mass Effect Andromeda had a very similar process. Of course, we know that Andromeda had an extensive pre-production period that led nowhere solid that was then followed up by an intense and understaffed crunch period. As for my thoughts on this, well, the issues raised by Schreier's report are clearly large factors in Anthem's failure. It seems to less be the story of EA, messing things up, and more the story of Bioware's own failure. Because EA Games funded this and Andromeda for years and years not seeing results. And sure, Soderlund basically went for the pretty graphics and the Iron Man flying, but at least that was a vision for the game. It is one that they did not end up executing well because of time, but it's a vision for the game that was workable and probably would have been better than nothing, and they seem to be heading towards, well, nothing. Ultimately, Bioware's two most recent games had a four to five year pre-production phase that ended inconclusively and then led to an extremely tight production process. Before that, yeah, Bioware magic had worked, but that was with projects that had a clear vision, like the Mass Effect sequels. Without a strong core direction, Bioware magic is not going to be able to save something like Anthem or Andromeda. And as for Bioware magic, well, that's the sort of thing that can maybe get you by if you're an indie or, you know, a small company, but it's not the sort of thing that can successfully scale into a larger organization. At least not with the, you know, the level of organizational incompetence that seems to have been displayed here. Uh, really, it ends up just being the exploitation of passion through crunch. And that's something that is a common problem in the industry, especially with companies like Blizzard. Of course, we've talked about that before. They're rather renowned for it, having pretty darn low base pay and a slew of other problems. So there you go, that is the that is the fallout from this. As we look ahead to the future of Bioware, what, what do we see? What's really going on there? Well, it's hard to be particularly excited, is it? It, it really isn't. We do know that a number of improvements have been made with leadership. It does seem like Casey Hudson's return and the appointment of Mark Dara to the Anthem team is what allowed that project to not crash and burn, and maybe what saved the studio from closure, although that is, of course, speculative. As for the Frostbite-related issues, we do know that they are using the Anthem codebase for Dragon Age 4, meaning that there still likely will be Frostbite-related problems because fundamentally it's just not a great engine for their workflow, but there will be less than what was experienced with the last three Bioware titles. That certainly is a good thing, but one has to wonder, would they not have been better just using Unreal 4? I mean, sure, they saved themselves a 5% licensing fee from Unreal by using Frostbite, but I think it's pretty darn fair to say that the critical response or the critical reception of their last two games has cost them a lot more than 5%. And certainly the long-term damage in brain drain is going to be a lot more than that 5% revenue. Overall, a messy situation. I wish Bioware's current staff the best. 
Obviously, if they can turn it around and have a more healthy working environment and better tools that allow them to make great games, that is better for everyone involved. I don't want to go around dancing on anyone's grave here, but we need to acknowledge how bad things were, and we need to point that out, because that's the only way that things are going to get better. So hopefully they do. Let me know what you think down below. I'd be very interested to hear what your takes are on the entire situation here. And with that, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.